Today I'm going to be tying another chronomid pupil pattern that imitates the gassed up or chromied stage of their life cycle. When we do throw pumps of fish that are feeding heavily on chronomids, we very often get a large sample of completely silvered or gassed up pupa. That's because these pupa at that gassed up stage are suspended at the bottom of the lake and are getting ready to rise up, elevate through the water column to the surface of the lake to emerge as the adult. What often happens is that these gassed up pupa will stage for multiple days within a couple feet of the lake bottom as they're not quite ready to complete that emergence migration to the surface of the lake. So trout really recognize the chromied or gassed up phase of the uh, chronomid pupa and that's why we're always searching for materials that help us imitate that gaseous stage where there's body gases building up under the cuticle of the abdomen to give that illusion of trap gas which helps rise it to the surface of the lake. So that's why we're using materials such as window tent, uh, anti-static bag material, mylars, different flashaboos, crystal flashes to give us that imitation of that gassed up phase. So we're going to go to the bench now and I'm going to tie up a pattern using static bag and then an underbody of wine thread. So, and I'm using wine colored thread or maroon because when you look at a lot of throat samples you'll see that the underbody of the chronomid pupa is a brown, dark brown, burnt brown color, maroon almost to red in that color phase. And so we're trying to imitate that underbody of the abdomen mixed in with a wrap of anti-static bag material, window tint, uh, and often uh, to give that illusion of that gas that's built up under the thorax and abdomen. So let's head to the tying bench and tie up the anti-static bag and wine thread underbody chronomid pupa. I've got a number 14 scud hook in the vise, a Daiichi 1120. I've pinched down the barb. I've slipped on a 564 brown magic Togan's brass bead. And then for the gills, I'm going to be using white uni stretch front. The underbody of this fly will be the wine or maroon UTC 70 thread. The secondary rib will be copper wire, brown copper wire and fine. And then the primary rib will be a 0.5 millimeter diameter strip of anti-static bag material. So lay a base of tiny thread down and then we're going to tie in some of the white uni stretch like so We'll trim that to length when we fi finish the fly. So just whip finish that off. Just standard when we're using dark colored beads and we want gills. And we're just sliding the bead right up to the eye of the hook. I'm going to reattach our tying thread. Like so. And then we're, I'm trying to make this body as thin as possible, so I'm just spinning the thread to get it flat, lay flatter. So, 
brown copper wire, tuck it under the bead, and I'm laying it down the back. And then I'm going to tie in my static bag, a 5 millimeter strip, 0.5 millimeter strip, pardon me. So, and I'm just going to thin the thread out a little bit by spinning it. And I'm going to try to make a bit of a tapered body up to the bead. Then I'm going to take my static bag and I'm going to make wide wraps. I want, I want the maroon to show through when the fly is completed. Like so so this maroon underbody very common. Shades of brown, dark brown, maroon brown and then maroon almost to red are very common underbody you see on cast up static bag type chronomids as they're getting ready to be paid. I'm going to take my wire, my secondary rib, and I'm going to lay it down in that gap between two strips of anti bag but right next to the anti-static bag. So I still leave lots of room for the maroon thread to show up. Okay. Now we're just going to twist the thread off. And we're going to take my um, whip finisher This tying on this 14 scud hook is pretty standard size that you're going to encounter in lots of lakes. So there's the completed fly per se. And then I just like to run a whoop, lighter. See how quickly that shrunk? What that does, it stiffens up the the uh, fibers on the um, on the gills make them fluff out a bit. Then I'm just going to coat this guy with some Flybox brushable UV lacquer, and it'll really make the um, maroon thread pop out. So when the fly is finished, it's going to be a very realistic. other side be a very realistic looking imitation of a of a cast up pupa. So there's the finished fly. A pretty simple tie. Really helps to have that pre-cut anti-static bag material in that fine diameter. It gets nice even spacing. It's a deadly it's a deadly uh, effective fly. Uh, in a lot of the BC interior lakes and other lakes throughout North America. So tie a few up, have them in your box. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.